Hey guys, it's Yvette, and I am so excited to be starting this centerpiece table mat, finally. Um, we are making it with Broomhilda's Bakery by Kim Christofferson of Kimberbell Designs. And it is a such a cute fabric. I'm so excited um, to be working with it again because this fabric is actually from last, um, is from last year. And this was absolutely by far my favorite Halloween fabric last year. And so I'm really excited to be doing this. Okay, so before I get started, um, and here is the, um, doo -doo 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 -doo, the pattern. <laughs> you know what that is. Um, okay, so I'm going to put one of these Dollar Quilting Club rotary blades on my cutter because I do need to usually what I try to do is at the beginning of each project unless I've done unless I'm doing like a few little projects I might try to see you know how long I can keep it on but I usually try to you can tell that you need a new blade and so um, I've been doing a lot actually with this blade so I definitely need to change it um, so I thought what better time then now, so that you guys can see um, how it's going to work. Okay. And this is, of course, this is my rotary cutter. I know that they sent to us a rotary cutter of our choice. Um, but the kinds that they offered were just not really going to be my choice anyway. Um, so, no biggie. Now, I just carefully take this off. I'll kind of poke it out. Um, and I will go over in a bit and put that in a special place to throw away because not only am I around, but I have my three kitties that walk all over and I just, I always think about them first. So, um, now there are two blades in here and listen, what's the right way? I don't know. Look, this is what I do. I will use my fingernails to sort of pull them out. I touch the middle and then I squish them sideways. See how I just did that? Um, they just, because they're oiled, they'll slide over each other. And then I, you know, I don't touch the blade. I put it down on the little circle and close it immediately. And then I will take it. I lift this piece up and then I put it right on there. I don't touch the blade. Lay it down. And then I love this one because it pops right on. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to touch the middle again and go, I'm going to go toss this. Okay, I just have a special place that I put them. I keep them all together and I in a closed container and that's what I do. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, set it aside. And now we have our rotary cutter ready. And I have pressed all the fabrics um, in preparation for doing the cutting. So the first thing that we want to cut according to the pattern, um, because the pattern says you're going to first, um, make a 13 inch square out of our fat quarter. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Okay. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna try to get, oops. I have a lot of rulers over here, guys. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I'm sorry, Jelly Bean. Jelly Bean is napping. <laughs> and Smudgy is laying next to him, so it's the two of them, really, together. Okay, so what I do is, I, first I just make my first cut over on this side. And, I mean, you're going to be making a 13-inch square, so it doesn't really matter, um, you know, where you're going to start. But, of course, you don't want to, like lose a whole bunch of fabric so I try to make try to get close to the edge um, but I mean leave it enough so that it's you know because I've got plenty of uh, for a 13 inch square I've got plenty um, so I can afford to lose a little bit there okay that was actually pretty good that wasn't bad um, okay 
Now guys, listen, everybody has a different way that they do all of this stuff. Do whatever works for you. I am just one of these people. I am very particular and very, I, I just, I get really <laughs> perfectionist about everything. So what I do is I will take, um, try to pull this down a little bit. Um, okay, I don't like this ruler because it's got all of the numbers on the 13 inch. So, do I have anything else that's 13 inch? Yes, I do. Hold on one second. Of course I do. Duh, what a crazy question do I have. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Okay, so I will take this ruler, which is at 13 inches. I don't like having that white line right on the edge because it, okay. Now I take my ruler and I'm gonna, the black line that the 13 is on, you wanna put that right on top of the end, not over the other side. Because if your line is to the outside of your fabric, then you're, you're losing some of that 13 inch. I mean, not a lot, but when you're sewing, it makes all the difference. So you wanna make sure that your black line is right on the inside, just to the inside of the edge of your fabric, okay? And then I take this ruler, I just hold it there, cause I know that's where, it, where the edge is, right? And then I take this one and I flip it and that's where I cut. Okay, so now I can take this away. This is a little extra piece. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here, but what I'll probably do, okay, I make sure I can see the bottom edge there and what I like to do is I'm going to make sure that the 13, line 13, since I'm doing a 13 inch square, let me double check that because I make all kinds of mistakes whenever I keep thinking I'll remember correctly. I'm going to put my black line just to the inside of the fabric and I'm just going to trim there. I probably could have gone a little bit closer, but there we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side where I'm going to take my 13 and I'm going to put it just to the inside of my fabric. And I do, I am very meticulous when I'm cutting. So <laughs> like I said, if you do something different, it's perfectly fine. If it works for you, don't stop doing it. Right, now this is extra. Okay, now uh, we have our 13 inch square. So if we go inside our pattern, it tells us that we are going to fold it in half, okay? And match the edges, okay? Now we have a 13 inch by six and a half inch, and then we're going to fold it in half again, like so. And you guys, it doesn't, I mean, I know I say I'm really precise, but it doesn't have, this part does not have to be crazy precise. It's, I mean, you want to be pretty close, but I mean, you don't have to go all nuts. It's gonna, if your rotary cutter blade is new, you're gonna, it's gonna be fine, okay? Okay, and then it says fold in half diagonally to create a triangle. Fold so that the triangle has all raw edges on one side and all folded edges on the other. Okay, so these are our raw edges and these are our folded edges. So they want to make sure that these two edges are on one side and the, uh, and the, uh, on the other. So in other words, you want it to go right down here. You want to have uh, raw, raw, folded, folded, OK? 
okay so we will fold it like that Doo -doo. okay so now basically I'm looking at it and my raw edges are right here and so are my folded edges but I put them on the top so that I can see um, the raw edges exactly like that okay now it says line up the triangle on the mat as pictured single fold long edge on the bottom okay oh I see what they're saying nope I did that wrong okay let's start again because I'm looking at the picture and now I see what they want I have folded it once I have folded it twice and now they want I see what they want okay so you see how let's put our um, our raw edges in this V and the folded edges in this V they want the raw edges to be together so you want to take it and fold it this way and now I have raw edges all the way down there and folded edges all the way down on this side okay I get it because then see they have the single fold long edge here you want the folded edges to your right which they are and then our raw edges on the left okay so I do have that there and then it says cut two and three quarters inches off the corner of the triangle where indicated and see how it's going to end up with um, this little piece over here is gone and all of that is okay so all of these edges are folded all of these edges are raw this is your long folded one okay so I'm going to take a ruler and I want two and three quarter inches so that's going to be to this black line right here so I've got one inch two inches um, and three inches this black line right there so I'm gonna line that let me see I'm gonna make sure I get that closer for you guys and I'll zoom in with my camera okay I do need to do it but I got to cut all the way up so <laughs> I have to like pull the pull it up a little bit higher okay so I'm, I'm leaving this line doesn't matter which one it is I'm this is the five inch um, whatever it has a five on it um, but I'm just making sure that that is um, lining up with the bottom of the fabric and then I've got the very corner right at the two and three quarters mark okay so once I have that there I'm just going to cut it and then once I take this away it looks just like that okay and then when I open this up I now have the octagon that we needed and voila there you go and if you have any questions about that please ask it's um if i can edit out the first part where i told you how to do it wrong i will because i don't want to like confuse anybody um, but i'm going to take this over to the pressing board really quick just to press out these uh, lines that i've smooshed down and i'll be right back to get started cutting on the other fabric okay guys so i am back and i am now going to take um these pieces of fabric and I'm going to cut them down to one and a half inch strips now let's say that you really like this pattern and you want to make a bunch of these centerpieces um, centerpiece table mats for your friends well if you find any of these um, Oh, I forget what they're called, but they're basically half of a jelly roll. So, well, not half, because a jelly roll is two and a half inches wide, and these are one and a half inches wide. So they're already cut um, to exactly, I think they're called a honey bun. That's what they're called. So if you find these honey buns in a pattern that you like, 
you can always just use this and then you just need a fat quarter for the center right that piece we just cut and then you'll just need a piece for the backing and and you can even i mean if you wanted to have a very small binding you could use this um or you just need a little bit extra for binding so these are really come in handy if you want to um make more okay so i'm gonna just set that aside for a minute clean off my table a little bit are you coming over here sammy i'm about to start cutting <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to take the first one, and I've already pressed them, and you guys, I mean, personally, I press everything before I start to sew, and the reason I do that is because I also starch everything. I use Best Press, and I feel that it makes the fabric easier to work with. Okay, keep going, baby. <laughs> That's Sammy. Sammy, I just pressed that, sweetie pie. Thank you, honey bun. Okay, so so that's what I do. I like to starch it, and it's a very light starch. It's not gonna make everything super stiff. Um, I will link it below in case you want to give it a go. It's really nice stuff. You can get unscented, or there's a whole bunch of different scents you can try, and um, yeah, so we'll, so there you go. So I'm gonna take the first one, and I just roughly kind of make them um, the same because Gwen cut them at about four and a half inches, and they we just need two strips, one and a half inch each. So, um, the first one, I ha this is one and a half inches, so I'm personally just going to cut it a little bit um, bigger so that I can trim the other side and make it nice, nice. So, let's see. I'm going to line up the just a line it doesn't matter what i'm just going to line up one of these lines um, just underneath so that i know that i'm getting pretty even cut i'm just going to go a little bit bigger so that i can cut off this raw edge it is one and a half inches yes <laughs> i always now i start looking like a million times because you just never know all right so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slide that one over because I'm gonna have to trim the other side. But since this piece is ready, I'm just gonna cut that right now at the one and a half. And again, I'm gonna make sure that my one and a half mark is right to the inside of the fabric. Okay. Oops, might help if I open it up. Okay, so now I've got this extra. I'll just set that aside. Take this one, just gonna turn it around real quick. Make sure that my ruler line is just to the inside of the fabric. And then that's a little bit extra. And now I have two strips of that one, so I'll set it aside. I'll take the next one, and I'm just gonna try to line it up. If it's a little bit crooked, I mean, because sometimes it's like that on the bolt whenever, um, when she gets it, it's really okay, because she was very generous with the cut. Okay, so um, the pattern says that we need eight, okay, I, well it does say, it says a minimum of eight width of fabric, one and a half inch strips, and she gave us nine, um, and 
I'm thinking that one maybe should be for the binding. I, that just crossed my mind, like just now. Um, that's just my iron. Hold on. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So that's what I'm personally going to do. I'm going to save this for my binding and hopefully that's going to work out. Um, or do I want to just throw it in there? I mean, I can just throw it in there and I'll have like two blacks because I have a black there and I just have another one. Ah, eh, let's do it. Why not? I can find something to bind. Even if I just use plain black or plain white or something like that. Okay. That's a plan, Stan. <laughs> and also it'll um it'll show us if, you know, exactly how much we needed to really finish the project, right? Okay. Let's see. It's going to be the last one. This, I have to tell you, this is like super simple to cut out. And it's taking like no time at all. So this is a pretty easy project. Um, if you really like it, uh, if you find like the, just some really cute fabric, I mean, who wouldn't love this? And you could um, make them for spring and for Thanksgiving and I mean, sky's the limit, you know? Doesn't even have to be like a specific holiday like Christmas or Thanksgiving or Halloween or anything like that. It can just be in general spring or summer or whatever your little heart desires. Oh, how about a happy birthday one? That's a good idea too, actually. And then, um, you can give it to the birthday person as a gift <laughs> once they go. Um, okay, so this extra, I'm just going to put to the side um, just in case, you never know. And now we have all of our strips cut and we have our centerpiece, so we're ready to start. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna work with each fabric as a long piece because you're gonna be cutting them as you go and then that way you get the most use out of the fabric. That's what I think. Um, okay, so you guys know I mark everything. So if you wanna mark, you can, you don't have to. Totally up to you, but I am gonna show you the way that I would make the piece. So I'm just gonna start with this fabric. Just pick any one you want whichever you like. This is just one of the easiest ones for me to show you how I mark. And now for me, since I do mark, I'm just gonna mark the whole piece. Sorry, I just hit the thing there. I would just mark the whole piece because it'll stay on until you iron it off. And let me make sure that she does a quarter inch all piecing is done right sides together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to mark a quarter inch and let's see. Where is my, there it is. I use a friction pin. That's what I use. Use whatever you'd like or nothing at all. If you just want to, um, use your um, quarter inch foot. That's perfectly fine. I don't know, there's something about marking that I just really like. I just feel like I'm more involved with the fabric somehow. And I don't know, I just like it. And since these strips are so small, you'll find that it sometimes it's a little bit harder to get it right on um, the quarter inch. I wouldn't go too crazy with it. This is a very forgiving pattern. Um, and that's why, you know, what I might do is I might just mark this one and for the others, I'll just use my quarter inch foot because honestly, it is a very forgiving pattern. It's super easy to work with. 
But if you were going to mark, this is how you would do it, because this is how I mark. And if I can mark an entire piece at once, I would much rather do that so that I don't have to keep marking, sewing, marking, sewing, you know. Okay, but this is my first piece. So the pieces that we are sewing on are pretty small. So you don't really need to pin anything, but you could if you'd like to. So what the instructions say, I'll show you exactly. Um, okay, first strip, this is where we are. Line up a strip along one side, leave approximately a two inch tail beyond the top of the side. So if we were being really precise and just to, to show you, um, this is two inches because this is a two and a half inch square. So one inch, two inch. So I would take the bottom of that and put it right on, or let's say I take the half part and I put that half line right on the edge so then I know I'm going to the end of my ruler so then I'm just going to and this part um you want to not include the selvage in fact you could just cut it right off just so it doesn't confuse you you want two inches beyond approximately um and you're ready to sew there so what I'm going to do is just for this first one just to show you, just in case you are a pinner. I would personally use a pin only because um, the Wonder Clips in this instance would be so heavy on the fabric that it would just kind of pull it down. So personally, I would just, if you're gonna pin, just use a little pin. And you probably don't need more than a couple that should hold it right where you need it until you get over to the sewing machine. Okay, now whenever we're going to start sewing, if you read right here, it says, begin stitching in the middle and stitch to the bottom as indicated in diagram A, which is right here. And if you see their little stitch line, it's hard to see because it's all on black and white, but if you see their little stitch line starts halfway down. So what I'm going to do is I do have this all pinned, but I'm probably going to start sewing like just beyond this second pin, just somewhere around here. Just make sure I'm about halfway down. doesn't have to be precise, but just around this pin here, that's where I'm going to start sewing. And then I'm going to sew all the way down just to make sure that it's all sewn to the bottom piece. Okay, so I'm going to go and sew that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm at the sewing machine. And I've decided to use black thread, um, but you could probably use a neutral gray if you'd like, um, and that would work just fine. So I'm going to remove this second pin because I'm gonna start sewing right there. And let's see, yeah, it's about halfway. Okay, so I'm going to lower my presser foot. I will do um, I just hold the thread. I don't know if you see that I'm doing that. I know I have a lot of light here, but I just hold the thread so that it doesn't bunch up under the, um, like in your feed dogs. Once you have that one stitch, you can just back stitch one and then go forward. Now you see I've lined up my fabric right to the edge and I'll just hold it with a finger and you're just guiding the fabric. The machine is pulling. You don't pull or push or anything. You just guide the fabric through right on your line or as I said, you can use your quarter inch foot and that would be just fine. I just wanna make sure I'm going to the end, which is going to be right here. I'll just put a finger sort of there. You can go over a little, obviously. I just wanna make sure I get all the way to the end. I can sort of see where it's going to be. Okay. Then I am going to just trim off the, fab the thread, sorry. And 
Okay, so I'm going to take it back over to the cutting board and I'll show you how we're going to um, trim all the pieces. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've brought the piece back to the cutting board because what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this piece just like this. We're just going to leave it. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim here. So what we want to, what we do, just pull your little tail up just so it's out of the way. Lay it flat. You want to take a ruler. Any ruler's fine as long as it's uh, long enough that you can trim here. You want to put the edge of your ruler right on the edge of the hexagon or the octagon piece, right? It's going to go right on the edge. And then you'll take your rotary cutter and you just trim off just like that. Okay. So now your piece should look just like this and you are, um, stitched all the way to the bottom and so now we're going to turn the fabric and get ready for the next one okay um and this starts starts turning into sort of like a design thing you know like which one kind of goes next i'm going to put this white piece next okay and i won't i won't mark it i'll just I'll just wing it. <laughs> I'm just cutting off the selvage. And we're going to put uh, right sides together. And all you want to do is you want to, because um, this is when this folds over, you just want to make sure that they're joined together correctly. I usually just go over just a little bit, um, just so I know that I'll catch some fabric. Not a whole lot. How'd they do on there? Yeah, they did the same thing. Okay, cool. Um, and she says, she doesn't say anything special. She says, second strip. Line up a strip on the next side, which is this side, working your way around the octagon. Stitch from end to end and press. Oh, that's what I didn't do first. Durr. Thank goodness I read that. I just need to press this piece, so just give me one second. <laughs> And I totally forgot that you're supposed to press it first because then once you have it um, pressed over, this piece comes off too. So one second. Uh, okay, so you want to line it up. The next piece of the octagon. And then we're going to trim that off. Boop. Okay, now we're cooking with oil. <laughs> okay, so now we have this piece and we're going to lay this down with just that little bit over, right? And we're gonna start stitching right on the edge. So that's why you wanna have, I just usually have this little bitty piece just to make sure I have something to get started on. Um, and then I'm just gonna put one pin just so that I can carry it over without having to, you know, cause I gotta set up the camera and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna hold that right there. Now I'm gonna go back over to the sewing machine and I'm bringing you with. Okay, so here I am at the sewing machine. And I have uh, my fabric lined up, right sides together. I'm going to put my, oops, a little bit too much out of there. I'm gonna get it right one of these moments. You got it right the first time. Okay. Now I hold this string. That's what I do, thread. <laughs> I'll hold the string, one stitch. In this case, I'll take two, and then I'll back stitch one, and ready to go. Now, personally, I just, I would prefer to have it marked no matter what, just because that's how I am. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, well, I'm not really using a quarter inch foot, and yeah, maybe I'll mark going forward. Just make me feel a little bit more comfortable. Because then I could stitch a little faster too and not feel like I'm going to get something wrong. I'm almost there. Okay, 
right, and I'll just trim this leader thread. And let's go back over to the cutting board. Okay, so I actually stopped off at the pressing board before the ironing board um, before coming over. So I have already folded this over and pressed the seam. And now I'm going to line up the ruler with this side here. And I'm going to trim. Okay. So now I have two pieces done. And let's see. I think the next one I'm going to do is this one. And I definitely want to mark the seams. I know you guys think I'm nuts, but I just prefer it. I feel like I can be more precise with it and it's a personal decision. So you do not have to do this if you think it's crazy because whatever works for you is what I want you to do. Okay. Smart. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to just cut off this selvage piece. Okay, now I'm going to take it. I'm going to lay it down right sides together. Oops, got to go the other way. That's how I have it marked. And I'm just going to go a little bit past. And did I get it? Oh, I'm a little bit over. Okay. Then I'm just going to pin just to make it just one pin. Make it easier to carry over, that's all. I don't think it's really necessary. Okay, so I'm going to go and sew this piece. And I will come back and we'll keep trimming around. And I'll show you exactly how all this goes. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, one thing that I forgot to do because I was looking at the um, instructions is when you get to the second piece, you also need to trim this way, and we'll do it on this one as well. So all you need to do uh, is the same as trimming this one. You just want to now line up with the first fabric. And I'm trying to make sure I get it laying the way it should. Okay. And then we'll do this one right here since we're right there. And then we'll make this cut as we've been doing going to line up with the orange fabric. I almost need like bionic eyeballs for the precision I'm trying to get, right? I don't even know why I do this. Because it's very forgiving. It really is. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to mark my next fabric which I've already used um, the green the white the purple and since this is also a spider web I'm gonna pull this one all right let's see here I'm going to 
probably won't be able to see this um, mark as well, but that's okay. It'll be there. I'll know it's there. It'll be sort of like a guideline, if nothing else. You'll sort of be able to see it. Definitely where the, the pen goes over the printed parts. And so if you can just make it from one printed part to the next, <laughs> you're usually pretty good. That's the only thing about black fabric to me is that sometimes it can be a little difficult to see certain landmarks. But since this one has got some color on it, it'll be okay. If y'all hear the garage door, that's Jim. Uh, he either is going somewhere or he's just going to be playing outside. He does that. Uh, let's see. My pen is running out. That's why I'm kind of going. But I... I take every single piece of juice I can out of those things. <laughs> okay, so now I'm ready to add the next piece and I'm going to put them right sides together. And I wanna, oop, I didn't cut off the silvage. Let me do that. All right, I'm just gonna go over just a tiny little bit. And There we go. So I'm going to take this over and sew it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've pressed this piece and I'm going to make it a smaller ruler since I don't need a really big one. And I'm going to take this ruler and line it up the outside of the last strip. And then I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to line up the ruler with the orange. Okay, I'll set this aside. And now, okay, so now we're going to pick our next fabric. Now for me, just for now, I would prefer if I didn't have two greens like on either side of each other. And I don't want another black fabric um, because I just did one. And I don't really want a purple because there was one right before. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the other white fabric, which is this one. And I'm going to need to mark it. And now I can bring this longer one back for a minute. Okay. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to put these right sides together. Oh, I didn't cut off the selvage. At least once I use each one of them once, I won't have to do that. Um, okay, and then I'll, so I'll put it right there to the edge. 
and I'm going to sew all the way down. I'll be right back. Okay, we are just continuing with our trimming. Trying not to overthink it here. <laughs> then I'm going to trim this side. Okay, so now we're trying to pick something for this side. And I think I'm not going to really, I would prefer if I didn't have another green that was like in one of these two spots. So I'm going to put a green here. So let me take that other green. And the idea when you're placing the fabrics also is don't, I mean, in my opinion, it's better if you are not, you know, really precise about it like I wouldn't put this fabric this fabric this fabric that fabric and then, and then keep going like in the same order I don't know what we'll kind of see how that works that might actually be a good idea in fact let's kind of think that we're going to do that and see where things are going to end up because you might have to change your mind about that um, it just really depends on how it looks and until you get to that point, you don't really know. Oops. And all I'm doing right now is because it's a long piece, it will start to like wave a little bit. So you might have to kind of, hello, what am I doing? <laughs> Put, um, you know, put a little bit of pressure whenever you get it exactly where you want it. Um, it's just, you know, that's just how, it's just gonna do that naturally. It's a natural thing that it's gonna wanna move, you know, around, especially under the weight of the, um, of the ruler. So you just kind of work with it a little bit. You don't wanna pull it too much. You wanna kinda have it lay where it wants to lay, but at the same time, you know, you might need to like pull it just a little tad, like just to get it in a good little spot. Especially if you're me and way too anal about everything. Just so perfectionist. I don't know why I try to do that. It's kind of crazy actually. Let's see. Okay. I'm just going to trim off this selvage piece and I'm going to lay it right sides together what is on there it's called nothing Yvette okay <laughs> so I'm just going to line it up um, with it and I'm going to go and sew this down be right back okay ready to do um, this trim really weird okay I'm gonna stop overthinking it of course I say that every time and I never do so we'll just <laughs> have to see how it goes <laughs> oh gosh so crazy all right do, 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 do. okay so here we are. The next piece, um, I want a black piece. So let's see. Let's do, um, if I'm being honest, this black with the orange is really not my favorite. And so even though I'm coming up on a little bit of candy corn, I think I'm going to do this black candy corn next. I just prefer it. 
um, and I would prefer that the my the ones I like the best be toward the center so that's my decision I'm gonna do that Okay, so now I'm just going to cut off this selvage. And I'm going to lay this right sides together. With just like a little bitty piece hanging off and I'm gonna sew this and come back. Okay, so now I'm going to trim up right off here. Then this piece. Okay, so now we have this one piece left and um, I'm gonna put a purple. So I'm gonna put this dot Okay, so I'm going to trim this selvage. And I'm gonna take right sides together and I'm gonna have that piece um, go right there. Okay, I'm making sure I'm doing that right. Okay, so I'm just gonna go sew this part and then I'm gonna show you how to attach this little, um, the little tail that's hanging off there. <laughs> Be right back. 
Okay, so now we're going to trim this up. trim this one as well we're just moving this little tail out of the way and finishing everything else as normal as every other row okay so now that we've done that all we need to do is take this lay it out and we're just going to sew this way. You, you can just flip it around. You can either hold it down and sew it toward, but I don't think that's such a great idea personally. Um, this is a little more awkward in my opinion, but more precise. I would lay it down this way and then just sew here. Um, so you may need that line. I will have to draw mine back because when I've been doing all the ironing, it's gone away. So, um, because I'm gonna be doing it backwards like that, I'm definitely gonna mark it. Okay. A little, there we go. All right, so you just sew that one all the way across and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we are doing the last trim for this first round gonna trim it right here okay so this is where we started on the green candy corns and we've gone all the way around one time and I think we do a total of four yeah, so we're gonna go a total of four around. And the one thing I wanted to make note is that um, with this pattern, you can always change things up. Um, if you have a larger table and you'd wanna make this larger, you could start with the 13 inches and then use two and a half inch strips, or you could continue to use one and a half inch strips, but add more layers out. I mean, really the, the sky's the limit with that sort of thing because um, all you're really doing is making sure that you're following a pattern around and as long as you just follow those instructions you're fine um, okay so now we're gonna put a piece right here to start and I'm thinking that black is gonna look good and I'm gonna go ahead and go with one of these pieces even though you know it's not really my fave but I'm gonna throw one in there and let's see well if I can get them apart <laughs> all right so I'm gonna try to mark this one I think this is gonna be a little bit tougher to see but we'll give it a go let's see I also could probably try to pull a red friction mark it out, marker out or pin out. I didn't really think about it. But red might show up a little bit better. I know black, you think black would, but it really doesn't. Um, at least not for me. I find that it's easier if I use like a, a red or a blue and really it depends on what the pattern is in it. Okay, so I'm first going to cut off the selvage. 
and then we're going back to the instructions as if we were doing the first one, which we are. In this row, in this next level, we're doing the first one. So I'm gonna take, where, here it is, take my little ruler, and I'm gonna put the half inch mark right on the edge so that there's two inches sticking out. Okay, and then I'm going to lay this down right sides together and I want to make sure that my fabric goes the two inches out which there it does I'll pull this out and because this is a precise one I'm gonna put a pin in just so that I can take it over to the sewing machine and I know I'm not going to lose that now remember we're going to start sewing about halfway Okay, so if I'm looking at that, I'm going to start about right here. And if you'd like, you can also put a pin there just to kind of remind you, hey, this is where I'm going to start sewing. And you could have left it down, but it doesn't really matter as long as you see the pin sticking out. Um, so I'm going to head over to the sewing machine. I'm going to start sewing right there and all the way down. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so um, here it is. I've got my little tail. I'm going to leave that there. And I'm going to, where did my ruler go? Oh, there it is. Um, and I'm going to line up on the white piece. And trim. There's nothing to trim on this side um, because that's our tail. So on the very first one, no trimming, only one trim. That's what I meant, one trim. Okay. So now, Let's see. I've used all the fabrics because we had nine different pieces that Gwen gave us. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So what we could do is if we were going to go in the same order, right, then we would have to put this piece right here. Now, nothing wrong with that, okay? But I'm just not sure um, that I want that one to go right there. And to be honest, um, I don't know if, that's, if that green is too close. Like, let's see. I think probably if I were thinking of it, hmm... I'm sort of thinking I'd want a green here. And so if I did that, I couldn't have a purple here because I've already got a purple. I could have, hmm. Okay, let's see. Let's think about this. Let's just say I put that there, okay? Let's just fold it and make it easier to stay. If I put that there, that looks okay, but it makes everything else a little wonky trying to get it. So let's see if we put it here. And let's see. This is why she says if you have more than eight, that's perfect, and she's right because you could then you could start really mixing things up. Um, I don't want to put a white there, so I'd pretty much have to do like a purple, and I can't do this purple. So then I'd have to put a purple dot. Right. So now we've got black, purple, and then we'd have to put a white. And it'd have to be this one. And then, so we'd need to have a black right there. And
That's already too close. So I'd have to do a candy corn. If I did a black. Okay, I did a purple, green, white. Purple, green, white, black. So then I would need another purple, which would have to be this guy. And we've got those left. Purple. Then we need a green. All right, let's just see what it looks like. Let's just put it down. Let's just lay it out. It's the only way I'm going to know. And we need this one. All right, what do we think about that? It ends up with two, two webs together. But actually, I think it's okay. You know what? I'm just going to go with that. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to sew all the way around, and I'll come back once I'm finished that second row. Hey, guys. Okay, so I have done the second row, and we are ready to add our third row. Okay, so this was my first fabric. Um, in both rows okay um, and so now I have to figure out what I want to put after this fabric um, okay now I think that there was every time you go around there are eight fabrics so there's always one that you're not going to add now last in this last row this is the one that did not get added. So I want to make sure that that one does go in. It's obviously not going to go there, but I want to make sure that this one does go in. Um, and obviously because I really just don't like that one anyway. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping it'll kind of get hidden in with the rest. So let's see. Um, how am I going to do this? I know that I want to have pretty sure I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put it here. Okay. Okay. And I want a white one here and it needs to be this one in my opinion. Okay. Um, Let's see. Then I think I'm going to put this guy. All right. And then I think I'm going to put this one here. Hmm. I don't know how I like that. No, that's too much purple right there. Um, this one's going to go here. Maybe. Nope. This one has to be... Well, then I've got the dots together. But at least it's different color dots. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for a minute. Let's look at that. Um... Then let's see. All right, so maybe I can take this and put it here. I might put 
in. Let's just look at this. So I still have to get that around. Um, let's do that there. See, this isn't going to work out, but let me just get it. Let's see. I've got to get this laid out. Maybe this could go here. This could go there. And then I can put this right here. You know what? I think I'm liking that. I think that's okay. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick them up in order. So I got this guy, and this one, this one. Do, 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 do. Do, do. And this is, you know, this isn't a, a fun part, you know, where you can kind of figure out where you want to put everything. And I was just thinking um, that when you're going to have, like, let's say that you use one of these little guys, there's going to be like so many different kind of fabrics that it would probably be even better um, having that many to be able to pick from. Um, and so I, this is like... I think that I can't, I want to try one with a whole lot of options just to see, you know, like what would happen. Um, okay, so let's get this one ready. This is the first one. I'm going to put it right sides together. And I need, here it is, here's my little guy. I want to take this and I'm going to put... Um, this little half inch, um, so at this line right here, the two inch line, I'm going to put with the corner right there. I want to make sure I got it in the right spot. And I'm going to take this and I want it to go all the way to that edge. Boop. And then I'm going to move the ruler. I'll hold it right there with a pin because I don't want that one to move. This is a specific place that this first one has to go. Okay, and then if I'm looking at halfway, and it just has to be approximate. You don't have to, like, measure or anything. So about halfway across there is, like, here. So I'm going to, like, just put a pin in just so I know where to start because we want to start sewing on the for the first strip halfway across. Um, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna sew from here, there, and then I'm gonna do all the ones around here and I'll come back um, once I have that third row in. Okay guys, so I came back and I have laid out my final round where I want them. And this is where I started. This is my first um, my first strip, I always put it right here. So I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Um, you know, it's sort of one of those processes where you just keep moving things until, um, until they look like you want them to look. Comes a point in time where you have to just let it stay. <laughs> so this is how I'm gonna leave mine. So I'm gonna pick them up in the order in which I need to sew them down. This project does come together really quickly, which I like. And I, can you imagine how even more quickly it would happen 
if you, you know, had the, the little, okay, what do they call this again? A honey bun. <laughs> if you had a honey bun in this, um, in this fabric. Anywho, so now I'm ready to get started. So, um, so let's do that. We're going to put our first strip down and this is the last row. So I'm going to go ahead and do this whole row with you so you could see, um, again, how we finish the whole thing. So I have my strip. I'm going to take my, this is my little two and a half inch ruler. I love it. And I'm going to take where, cause this is one inch I'm making sure I'm trying to make sure that y'all can see what I'm doing. Um, this is one inch, two inches, and this is the little half that's extra. So this line at the two inch, I'm going to put right at that little corner line right here um, so that it goes two inches above. Okay, that's about right. Doesn't have to be completely perfect. In fact, you could always pull it a little bit higher if you want. And I've actually only used one with the fabric one and a half inch strip for doing the whole thing. Um, I haven't even gotten to those other piles. So, um, you know, it's, it's, you have plenty of fabric. Okay. So now I'm going to put that down. And just because this is a very specific spot that we need it to stay, I'm just going to pin it down so that it doesn't move from there. And then I'm gonna sort of pull this down a little bit cause I wanna go about halfway and that's where I'm gonna start my first stitch um, on this last row. So I'm gonna put it about right there. It doesn't have to be exact as we've said a thousand times. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna start right here and sew all the way down. Okay, so here I am at the sewing machine and I can see that's exactly where um, I need to start sewing. So I'll just kind of put my finger there, pull the pin out and I will lower the presser foot make a stitch go back make a stitch okay I've been kind of folding that over a little bit and I just want to make sure that it's lining up and you just need to guide it you're not pulling anything through you're just guiding the fabric and I'm just staying right on my quarter inch seam allowance line Okay, that's plenty. Okay. Now I'm just going to <laughs> drop everything. No, I'm just going to trim off the extra. And um, I'm going to go over to the ironing board. I'm going to press this over and take you back to the cutting board. So we'll add the next strip. Okay, so now I'm back and this is the first strip. So we only have one cut to make. I'm going to line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the next um, strip. Okay. And then I'm going to take uh, my next strip, which was in my pile over here. And so I'm going to go over and I'm going to stitch this down um, right along that edge. I'll be right back.
our final cut. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my goodness. And, you know, we've just done this in a few hours. Didn't even try to take my time or anything. It's just one of those uh, projects that doesn't take that long, which is great. Um, okay, so we have finished our uh, centerpiece table mat top. And as you can see, there is like, when you just look at it, there it looks like there's ripples in it. And I know that if it's one of your first times um, putting anything together or whatnot, um, that's going to make you nervous. Well, I'm here to tell you, don't be nervous. Uh, when we get to our next step, which I'm going to uh, record a little bit later, because it's it's about 8 o'clock and um, I'm ready to take a break and go have some dinner. Um, so hopefully in a couple days I can come back and get this done. But the next step that I'm going to do, um, which is not here, this is just to you know, give you your, uh, your topper and I'm going to do the whole process with you. Um, quilting the top, adding the back, um, the binding, all that kind of stuff. So, um, we will do that in the next, two, um, so along the next part. Um, okay. So what, once we put this down on a piece of batting, we will press it down from the middle and go out. And what I always do with stuff like this is I'm just, I'm not like one of those people who's like a prolific quilter, I have to tell you. Most of what I do is just straight line stitching, okay? So once I have this, this piece itself uh, pushed down, just this middle piece pushed down onto a piece of batting, I'm going to just stitch around this part here okay that's the first thing I'm gonna do and I should probably say that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on top of a piece of batting and I'm going to put the backing under the batting so that we'll have everything together and I'll also show you um, how we would uh, put our label on the backing before we start sewing everything. At least that's how I do it. Um, some people do it differently. If you want to do it some other way, that's fine, but I'm just going to show you the way that I would do it. And so let's just pick that up where uh, on the next time where we left off. And I will see you guys in the next part. Have a good evening. <laughs>